Hey, is a centaur's junk by its front or back legs? I think back legs. Yeah, if he's a horse in the back, then it would be... Yeah, horse. it'd be a horse in the back. That'd be the worst if you were a centaur with a human penis. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, baby, take it. It's like, oh, that's, that's just kind of like a normal penis. It's actually a, a different breed of centaur where it's all horse except for a human penis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Or like you have a horse upper body, but your lower body is all human. So you can't even walk right because your, your top half is so heavy. And nobody wants to use your human penis. Yeah, especially centaur women. Would that be bestiality, though, for human penis? These are the questions to ponder, <laughs> the important ones. If you had hooves, it would be really hard to jerk yourself off. <laughs> Bronies call it clopping off. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about internet. I'm Joe. I'm Eric. And Eric enjoys talking about bronies. No, I'm not talking about that bullshit. Fuck those. I thought we were talking about jabronies. No, we're not. Yeah, we. I was trying to. I was trying to talk about jabronies because I've been all all about uh, old school WWF. Because uh, because. Uh, there's this. Uh, they just premiered this show on the Nerdist uh, Tournament of Nerds, and I'd seen I've seen the the actual like the live version at UCB before, and they they have this guy that does this great impression of Paul Bearer. I don't know if you ever watched. Did I have watch no it? idea what you're talking. I about. know what you're talking about because I loved the Undertaker back. Yeah, in the, the, day. The, the the there was. The Undertaker, who didn't talk much, and he, his manager, who actually was his manager, was a guy who, named Paul Bearer, and and because uh, because Paul Bearer, because he ran a, a a a funeral parlor, and he has just this such a unique cadence and stuff, and they have this guy that just got him down pat, like he's always holding an urn of ashes, and he's like, oh yes. Welcome to my funeral parlor, and it's it's hilarious. So, and he does a great impression. So I was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna watch some Paul Bearer." They gotta have shit like that on YouTube. So I watched like the this this home video thing that they did where Paul Bearer showed you his his home. It's just it's so good. It's he's so amazing. Wrestling in the '90s was great. Uh, because they got had to get inventive. Because in the '80s, they they weren't that inventive because they were all high on cocaine. So there was an added bit of like watching. Like it it is very different. Like if you ever watched like back in the '80s, Randy Savage is just fucking coked out of his goddamn gourd. Uh, in the '90s, it got it got a, just a little bit more creative than that. But it's so good. Look him up, fucking little kids. I have, speaking I feel... of fucking little kids, we have emails. I don't care what Joe has to say. Okay. Yeah, you're right, because that's what I wanted to get to. What about these emails, these so-called emails you're talking about? Uh, talking about uh, this is for uh, MMO Games from uh, Zamzi, our fan Zamzi. Uh, it Zamzi. says, hey, JC, Zamzi, was, I wonder in relation to Xerxes, Zamzi. Anyway, uh, <laughs> hey, JCE crew, I just thought that I would ask for a little bit of help with picking out a new game to play, specifically an MMO. You might want to direct this towards uh, Sp- you know, speed, max speed there. That might be all I have this question. Uh, I have been playing WoW for many years, and it's starting to get very boring for me lately because besides the rating, there's not much to do anymore. I was hoping that you might be able to recommend me a game to look into. Your fan, Zamzi. Uh, I don't know about MMOs too much. I know Guild Wars 2 comes out, like, next month, and everyone's fucking hyped to shit for that. I don't know. But apart from that, I don't really pay attention to any MMOs. Uh, so, I don't know. Blacklight Retribution just hit Steam, so you can, like, download it through Steam and stuff and have achievements. So, there's that, uh, and it's free to play. I don't know. Uh, I've been playing Battlefield 3. You can, you can friend me, the Dunkor, and we can play together, or not. Why, I mean, the person wants to play another MMO. If he's been playing WoW nonstop, he probably missed a lot of, like, good MMOs. Like, wait, no, he didn't. Yeah, the, <laughs> He probably missed. Wait, there was that Star Wars one. Oh wait, the, no. that that would be the only other one I would suggest. World of Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, World of Star Wars is actually legitimately fun, play. and it's a lot like WoW, and it's just a little bit. It's great if you're looking for that MMO experience without all the other people playing it. You know, it's great. <laughs> well, no, you could play it both ways. Except no one else plays that. Uh, there's still people playing it. Not well, many. if you had a LAN party, you and the three of your closest friends could play. Yeah. Why would there you, you LAN party an MMO? Me and exactly. Scott did. Because Me there's and... nobody else playing it, so at least D- you all play it together. Dag and myself LAN partied 
World of Warcraft pretty much every day for two years. And it was, and it, this is how the LAN party sounded. It was silence the whole time. Yeah. It was actually the worst LAN party ever. Yeah. Speaking of fail jokes, we have this email that says fail jokes and legitimate compliments. Dear cunt butts. Oh. <laughs> this is from Kurt. Dear cunt butts. So, how did you guys get Jonathan Colton on the show last week? And where was Ike? I would have thought he would have loved to be on the show with Joko. So, bad jokes aside, I thought I would mention in one of these emails that JCE is hands down my favorite podcast on the internet. We must be the only podcast he listens yeah. to. Eric being in, uh, being in the top three podcast hosts of all time. Definitely the only podcast he listens to then. <laughs> it has to be. Of all the three pod- <clears throat> podcast hosts I listen to. They, so, you just, are one of the top yeah, three. The, the top three is me and then you and Joe tied for second. That's the, the top three. Well, he didn't say you were top number one, so he didn't list. You're right. We, we, you were I'm the top, top three, three of so you, the three people on this show. <laughs> Great. I'm so proud. Much love. <clears throat> Ooh, much love. Uh, and cheers from Vancouver, Kurt. I love Vancouver. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I only started this because I thought, really? Top three? Like, I'm not saying I'm terrible at this. I, I know I'm Talk pretty good Eric. at it. I've been doing it for a while, so I, I, I know I'm I'm not bad at it. But there are some really amazing podcasts out there. I don't know but if this you've... is that he listens to. Yeah, I uh, maybe maybe you've never heard of WTF with Mark Marin, which is like one of the biggest ones. Or uh, Doug loves movies is great. Or just the Comedy Button, which is like of, my of personal all the basis. podcast hosts out I love, there. I love how we I'm are actively part of the top I, bottom three. Yeah, I'm I'm actively trying to convince this guy to not listen to our show now because I'm like really. <laughs> You should listen to something else if you think we're amazing. <laughs> like, uh, we're, we're, we're definitely summed in the past the time, but let's not get crazy here. But yeah, I'm saying we got our moments. We can be funny, but the best, no. Well, I mean, I mean, we, we do have our moments, though. If we had just had a moments show, <laughs> not best of, the JCE <laughs> moments show. <laughs> It'd be the best of this year. We would just record every week like we do, but only put out one podcast a year of all the best moments that happen. It would be 30 seconds year. long. Like sex with Joe. All right, this is from... But better. <laughs> it's... Uh, <laughs> uh, that so... was not uh, like having sex with me. That was the name of this email. He Which stroked out sounds an minute. awful lot like me having sex with Joe. <laughs> Coincidentally, uh, they sound the same. Uh, so I'm not a huge football fan, but it just so happens I was watching the final last night, and uh, Didum Italy, Didum Italy got two, is how you pronounce that. Oh, with the day, yeah, whatever. Oh, uh, don't talk about this. Italy got chewed up for breakfast and excreted for dinner. Sorry, Joe. I, I wanted to hear how pissed you were. Also, did Jack move, Jack move stop emailing the show? Bored out of my mind. Fun. Fun. You're right. Ninja. What happened to Jack Fun. Move? Like uh, my, mom, my mom has just been super busy planning this move that we're doing, so she hasn't had time to <laughs> pretend to be a, 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 a j- asshole on the internet and email the show and tell me to fuck you, you off. Still Twitters us from now and now on. Yeah. Then. Every so you often. Know, move, you're, you're our only hope. Um, so for fun, for fun's mm-hmm. sake, I watched the, uh, the UEFA cup. I, I know this is just all foreign to you guys. Anyway, so there's a soccer game, uh, for the championship of the year in Europe. That's I'm, I'm Americanizing it for Ike and, uh, for, for Ike and Eric. Here. I talk all the time about like no one else. I did, I did 15 minutes about the, the backstory of Paul Bearer on this episode alone. So you can, you can take, a I'm minute. literally, I was reading this. I'm like, footballs don't have finals. This cl- person clearly wasn't. Yeah, I was like, football. I was like, like the, oh, the Super Bowl was in oh. February. What the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> so anyway, uh, it came down to Italy versus España. Uh, in in uh, the championship game, and this has been going on for a long time, and Spain has been an awesome team, and honestly, the best team won. Italy got chewed up and spit out, and they were playing a dude down, and it, I can't even make excuses. Like I can't. They they got blown out so bad, it wasn't even like, well, the ref made the better call. What do you do? It was like, ah, shit. Like that was the whole game from first goal to the last 
four minutes of extended time. It was just awful. So, I mean, so, so it was basically what like watching the 2002 Super Bowl game where the Raiders fought the Buccaneers, and you're like, oh, hey, yeah, I'm glad I'm a Raiders fan and watching them basically fall over themselves. It was it was a lot like that. Yeah, um, I mean, Italy played. I mean, they were playing the way Spain wanted them to play for the first like first 15 20 minutes and and they got eaten up that it was awful uh, it was really hard to watch the whole game uh and i can I, and i did i watched i sat through the whole p- game because i felt like listen you know we're watching the team through it and you, if you're a fan you'll watch till the end you're not just going to turn it off so it it it, it hurt because i was with a bunch of italians too and we were all just sitting there and there was one german dude <laughs> with us and italy knocked germany out just uh couple days ago basically it was just it was real awkward it was the first time you met the family it it, we're like olaf this is not a good time to meet our family dude like we're not going to be happy right now you might as well just leave but uh there's no way to make it interesting i'm really sad about it thanks for bringing it up you jerk fun is not i'm not i'm no longer reading emails for fun we need where's jack move i miss jack move (laughs) wow Never thought I'd hear the day that you'd rather read an email from Jack Move. I was emotionally compromised when I said that. Mm. Uh, well, tell the emails again. Yeah. So let's move on to some stories. Now- no, no, no. One more quick thing. Oh. If you want your email read out on our show, like mm-hmm. these three people, but you have a better email, you can email us at us at the show at just com. Oh, wow. Okay. Rather wait until the end of the show. Figure we get at the beginning. That way they can stop listening now. Ike, Ike took broadcast classes while we were away. <laughs> yeah. Someone's taking glasses. I almost forgot we were doing a show tonight because I'm used to Joe asking for an extra day. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> that's what my mom. Was like, like uh, don't you have a show tonight? Or I was going to ask you if you want to go out to the bar. I was like, oh yeah, it's Monday, isn't it? Weird. Yeah, I, my mom said that. She's like, uh, pizza will be here probably right before your show. You're doing the show tonight. I was like, I don't know. If you would have asked me a few months ago, I would have said yes. But now it's just kind of fucking toss up. I I haven't received any text messages delaying it till Tuesday. But fuck if I know. Fucking I am. Joe. I like, am. I could have. I could have gone to see improv right tonight. now. Yeah. Can't go you, do. You shit. got. You got. I show up on time and you guys are bitching at me. <laughs> How, what? What would you do if you show up on time? You get bitched at. Would you want to show up on time next week? Yes. Yes. Me. Me too. You guys. Are, you guys are the, the glue that holds my life together. Now let's move on to stories. The only thing going on for your life. Uh, <laughs> So here's a story coming to us from, I believe it was Australia. Let's open the link and find out. Uh, apparently, a, a there was there was a robbery at, at, at like a convenience store somewhere in, I want to say Australia. Yeah, uh, in in Australia's Gold Coast Resort region. Uh, uh, and and the, the the perpetrator was was caught on film wielding a knife and uh, robbing this place, and then uh, jumped into an SUV that was waiting by and that drove off. Uh, the, the the perpetrator, you know, wielded the knife, uh, had gloves on to avoid fingerprints and and threatened uh, the, the stuff. Got away. I don't know if it said uh, how much he, the person got away with. Uh, happened to be a woman, uh, but the, the police are fairly confident uh, that they will they will find this person, hopefully, and and bring them to justice. Uh, one of the defining features is that she's wearing an incredibly low cut top and has very ample bosoms. Uh, so, uh, we're calling, I, at least I personally am calling this, uh, the big boob bandit, uh, who is, is currently, uh, you know, just, just, just running amok all over Australia's Gold Coast region. Uh, and, and the police are obviously going to analyze the tape and, um, and try and, uh, use, oh. hold on, I need to analyze this tape really quick. Yeah. They're, they're <laughs> I'm looking for clues. Yeah. I mean, they, they certainly have the work cut out for them. And I thought that because of us we i mean that we could probably help them out because as anyone who's listened to this podcast knows we are the definitive source in breast detection and for crime prevention uh purposes so i think it's about time that we offer up our services as the the foremost experts in breast detection uh, to the police of the Australian uh, Gold Coast region to help identify this this uh, this armed and dangerous bandit who is is robbing convenience stores. I mean, it, this is and I 
I believe, I mean, we're not doing this out of the goodness of our heart. This is the case that is going to put Just Cool Enough and its breast detection college on the map. So, so basically, the, what, what we got here, gentlemen, is a classic case of busting in and running. Um, the, uh, the, the, the lady's stealing something. She has giant boobs. And then she, she, she got away. Um, we're, 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 we're just going to have to take a couple more minutes and uh, look at the video again. I, in I think slow-mo. Yeah, in slow mo, back and forth. She, I, I mean, like obviously she's using her boobs to distract the people. I, I, I wouldn't. She actually like hypnotizes them. Yes, it's, 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 she's an X Men. I wrote some power. fan fiction about that. I'm kidding. <laughs> I wrote some fan fiction about that. <laughs> she, she's like, oh, uh, you'll never catch me alive, coppers, and then her her getaway driver. Flappy labias, McGeezak just no, drives away. Her getaway driver is just a you know a a a twenty something uh, young man who's just out and about and and is also hypnotized by her ample bosom and has no choice but to drive the the getaway car. It's like hypnotoad but boobies. Hypno boob. Yeah. That's her. All glory to hypno boob. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. That's the only way. It's the only way. I mean, I mean, it, it. I will say, though, it does sort of fit together with a, a short story that I've been writing for some time. I'm, how, I, does it, fit to, how does this fit together? What, what is I'm, I'm just story? saying that I've, I've written a lot of fan fiction about this, and I was compiling it into a, a sort of uh, long-form uh, novella, if you will, and and this happens. I'm thinking I'm I'm living in one of those like like movie worlds where where you write something and it comes to reality, like like uh, that movie Stranger Than Fiction or some of the. <laughs> you know, I think I think this is my fault. I think I have a magic typewriter, like in Are You Afraid of the Dark, <laughs> and I typed out a story about a big boobed lady who who robbed a, a convenience store in Australia. Now, yeah, now it's real. I'm really proud of you, Eric. I'm I'm glad that somebody published your work. But it doesn't become officially real till somebody reads it, which is uh for which is that's why we're safe because as everyone knows, nobody's ever read anything I've written, so none of it can ever come true. Why don't you post it on your site, thedunkor.com? I do, and still nobody reads it. So that was just a plug. What if I go to thedunkor.com and I read it right now? Well, Wait, where would you go again? The Duncor? Is it just read, you can read my new my uh my short story. I do have a short story up there called "Dear Samantha," which is uh, I, I thought was was kind of good. Uh, nobody seemed to agree with me, which is fine. Uh, and I am kind of I I have a couple of ideas for because I want to continue to write. I've got one in particular that I was inspired to write last night. Was it my idea that I gave to you? No. A hope there? No. No. That was a great idea. Why did you let it die? I, I didn't. Uh, that idea actually does float around in my mind a bit. I, I have kind of come up with it with different things, thought of different variables. Here. Joe calls me up one day. He's like, I've got this idea for a story. And, and he pitches it to me. I'm like, I, I don't want to be a dick, but that sounds like that's been done. Like He's like, no, but I got all these ideas. And I was like, well, what are you going to do? Originally? He's like, I don't know. I'm an ideas guy. I, uh, you do something with it. And then I started rolling with it and coming up with other ideas. It's like, perfect, do that, and give me credit. <laughs> I don't like the work part. Yeah, yeah, neither do I. I don't like when you call me up at home when I'm trying to. Well, I'm probably playing like I don't know, fucking uh, blood the skin gut, flute, blood gut chainsaw four for the X Xbox, and you call me up and you're like, Eric, Eric, hey, I got homework for you. <laughs> That's not the right way for me to introduce anything to Eric. Yeah. I'm, I'm See, I'm pissed because cuz I really I've always wanted to write my my uh my novel about uh uh, uh Theodore Bob Roosevelt Cops and Chainsaws. No, Th Theodore Roosevelt fighting Wendigos, but first they came out with Abraham Lincoln Vampire or Hunter and now they got the fucking movie. So now it's like I got to wait like 5 years before I can write that otherwise everyone thinks I'm going to rip it off and stuff and and then they they're, they're going to do like other books and I'm just going to look like I'm like got that idea. I've had that idea since 2006. Fuck you. It's going to be a good book. If you write it they will read. That's not entirely true. Anyway, I think that uh 
that the the source of this material is excellent to look at, and you should check it out on the site, justcoolenough.com. We have a link there for you if you want to see the giant breasted woman knocking up a hardware store. Or wait, it was a party store. I, I don't remember what kind of store it was. I, I didn't, honestly, I wasn't paying that much attention. <laughs> Speaking of things that are fun to look at, I, I know a lot of, we have a lot of young listeners, but, but we'll, we'll, Joe and Ike, will you indulge me in the fact that growing up as, as a small, uh, let's say, 13, 14-year-old child, uh, you had an unhealthy obsession with, uh, with at least the, the visual appearance of, of a certain girl band known as the Spice Girls? I would have to agree with you. In fact, I actually bought their CD, so maybe I had more of a... I did uh, not buy their CD. My sister had a copy. Uh, and I stole the the uh, the the CD art. So you did. You stole the album art to yeah. look at. To, to I mean, I would look at it. Again. I didn't stole like, it to vap too. Yeah, and honestly, and I did. I I did see uh, the the movie. But although I did, they did a movie, and I did see it. But I didn't like. I went to the like the theater. Which didn't hail. No, I th- there was a theater uh, nearby. I don't even know if it still exists, but they used to do like movies for a dollar, and and sometimes the movies had already come out on VHS, which is why they were so cheap. So I saw that and Flubber in like the same day for like a <laughs> dollar, you know, and that was the point. But I did go see that movie, uh, and and then watched it repeatedly on like HBO and stuff. I have never seen the movie. Oh, then you've not lived, good sir. You've not like, lived. Like, did you watch the Spice Girls movie? What was it called? Um, no. In fact, I wasn't really thoroughly into the Spice Girls, to be honest. It came out right when I was... I actually used to DJ. It was actually 27 when it came out. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that's, that's what it was. And uh, that's that's in uh, human years. Dog years, much more older. But um, it, it, was, it was right around the time that I was DJing in high school, so I did have to buy the music because I, oh. I, I had a fan base that wanted me to have... Tell me what you want, what you really want. And I was like, Ugh. but then I then I saw Baby Spice. I was kind of like, yeah, she's kind of cute. Yeah, that's about as much as into it as I got. Yeah, there was like a, a leaked nude photo of her, and then like like awful pictures of uh, of G-G- Jerry. Jerry. Yeah, of, of the the redhead from like Playboy that were rejected, but then she became famous, so they released him anyways. Uh, <laughs> the, you know, and and those were those were obviously saved on to your desktop as a child. But yeah, I mean they. They were they were a big thing for us. They were like the I don't I don't know quite the equivalent. I don't know if like a, a Selena Gomez is the equivalent or maybe maybe one of those I, I know they got those those Disney girls that the other one I don't know any of their names, but I see their pictures occasionally on like 4chan and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck these are, but uh iCarly, is that a thing still? I don't know. Uh but Apparently, the uh, Spice Girls are getting back together, not in, in a pop music sense, but uh, they're, they're uh, perf- going to be doing a stage performance uh, called, uh, what was the name of this thing? Who gives a fuck? But they're basically going to go uh, probably on tour with this like stage musical play thing in order to like bring the, a new generation of, of, of young girls to the, the idea of girl power and also a new generation of 13 year old boys, to the idea of uh, boners. I think the Spice Girls were excellent musicianists, musicianistas. Is that what you call women musicians? I, I think it, it would just, it's less sexist just to refer to them as musicians like anyone else <laughs> and not categorize them. Yes. Uh, it's funny. They've released a picture of, of, of the girls all together. And I was like, wow, so in like the the twenty something fucking years it's been since they performed last, they don't look so bad. No, I honestly, I uh, I when I was a kid, I, in fact, was, I think a few of them look a little better nowadays. Yeah, I've seen that like ten years ago. I, I maybe just it's makeup nowadays or something. Well, yeah, because but... because it was the nineties and things were fucking weird. It was all very colorful and uh, flamboyant, and now they're like, yeah, we're just you know people. But I, I'm I'm saying like uh, I think people look better nowadays, and I don't know if that's just like a, a thing, because like in the, I could They're photoshopped. It must be. You're right. That's right. exactly it. Never mind. The first CD I ever got was the Spice Girls, guys. All right. Ugh. I know, right? I, but I, I I also enjoyed the album art. Yeah. Uh, I I, I did honestly I didn't look at the album art that much, uh, but I did watch the videos on on uh, all the time on like MTV. So, you know, there was that too. 
and and obviously the movie on HBO whenever it was on. So yeah, uh, so that that's great. It's just a, getting a, a massive nostalgia boner from all of this. And I just thought like some of some of our younger listeners might not might not realize the the influential power that they had on on pop culture back in the day. I mean, because because they were really like they were one of the few because England has done this a lot but and continues to do this where they'll just kind of create a band of random people like five or more and uh it's they still do it i think that's that's but they the never, band that's around now right um one direction i i think they're canadian or something maybe i don't, oh, know, I don't know okay so there's america does this a lot but but england takes it like that much further they'll like have bands of like eight or nine people and you know it's boys and girls and the spice girls was like the first one that ever crossed over and i think probably the only one that ever really uh wait are you telling me the spice girls are british yeah all these years i had no idea <laughs> What's wrong with the Spice Girls? There's nothing wrong with them. Nothing. You, nothing. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. Did Did you also listen to NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys? No. There weren't any girls in it. What are you talking about? Backstreet Boys and NSYNC were awesome, too. I, I didn't really listen to them. I was... That was. You guys are L7 weenies. I loved the, I loved NSYNC. I loved Backstreet Boys. See, that was, that was kind of like middle school area. At the start of middle school, like sixth grade, I was all... I tried to, you know, eat up all the pop... Uh, songs I could because I'd never heard any of it. I'd been listening to Cool 101.1 my entire life, so I had no idea what it was, uh, what all this pop go. Then, like seventh grade, I started to get really into like indie or not indie rock, but uh, but like classic rock. Uh, when I discovered the classic rock station, so like from there through most of high school, it was all like it was it was just you know classic rock. It was Beatles, it was uh, Led Zeppelin, it was Pink Floyd. The, that was, you picked you picked a bad time to like classic rock because people are like, oh, he's just one of those kids that like old music, loser. No, I I didn't really care, and a lot of people I were I hung out with were kind of into it. Except my it's my friend uh, Ricardo, who lived across the street, he was into classic rock too. But then he started showing uh, getting it more into like contemporary rock, and I would follow him into that. But then he got into death metal, like he's like got into like Ooh. Slipknot and Cannibal Corpse, and I he's like, check this out. And I'm like. Fuck that! What is this? Yeah, I, I, I can't not... stand that stuff. Like, it really just does sound ye- a lot like yelling to me. I understand why people like it, but it, I just it doesn't click with me. It Which, it but, made me sad to learn that Lincoln Park was a boy band. I was devastated the day I found that out. I was. I, I'll be honest. I was into Lincoln Park in high school. I mean, I liked Lincoln Park, but then like, yeah, did you know they well, like they could, were put, they not... were assembled. They were assembled. They didn't form a band to come out. They weren't. They were put together. Almost all bands are like that. I mean, not a lot of bands are organically generated these days that's just how music is done but yeah i don't see i i mean i enjoyed the music and i do, does it take away from it does it really like the when you look back and you're like oh yeah i really liked meteora but they were a boy band so i actually didn't like it no you does can it you can like what it, i mean i i don't i mean i i bought uh the, the, I wasn't so much into the second Linkin Park album that they released in like 2000 something, but that one from like the late 90s, that was like all I listened to in my, my Astro van. I'd blast that while I drove to school every day. Uh, and, and uh, you know, that was that was my fucking jam. I'd, I'd listen to that and then watch uh, uh, fucking terrible uh, anime music videos uh, for Dragon Ball Z with uh, Linkin Park songs in them. And then it was just that was all the thing. And then I made one. Uh, I, I was also kind of weird because I was into that, but I was also into just things on un- like I'm unironically obsessed with that song. Um, I need a hero and it's raining men. I think those are amazing songs. I, I, I it, it wasn't an ironic like, oh, I'm listening to this. Isn't that funny? I'm like, I, I really like these songs like. <laughs> well, I know you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, but I, I have to admit you were both far better cultured than I because I grew up. Uh, I, until like the end of eighth grade, right before high school, it was nothing but oldies music that I listened to. And then when I started, just about the time I started DJing, I was like, well, I guess I got to start listening like cooler, hipper stuff. So I started getting into rap and like things like that. I was, nah. And then I started listening to techno. And my friends at high school were like, you listen to techno? Like, who listens to techno? That's like crap. Nobody listens to techno. I was the techno. only kid. And then kid. like today, I'm like listening to it. I'm like, but everything, all rap music, pretty much everything now is like dubstep techno behind it. I know, right? Like, I was of- just having this discussion with my brother. Like, I was listening to techno throughout high school and just like loving it. Like, uh, Chemical Brothers and, and, uh, not crystal method so much but like any 
Fatboy Slim. Oh, yeah, I love Fatboy Slim, anything like that. Just uh, And I love that stuff in high school, and and I hated the actual like, popular music, but now I turn on any of the popular stations, and they all have this like really techno-y or, or house or dance or trance like sound because to it. Because they can just buy those beats and you know from whoever, and it doesn't have to really go. But yeah, I was I was I went through what you went through just when six once I entered junior high, and everyone was like, "Oh, did you watch MTV? Did you see this song?" I was like, "I had no what you, you mean Crocodile Rock from Elton John because that's I heard that on the radio. Does that count? Like, uh, so I was like I was like, "Oh yeah," so I immediately immediately had to become an expert at least i felt i was like oh yeah did you know that the that this song is it like I, I borrowed my friend uh torian's uh bone thugs and harmony cd uh oh, and, yeah. and 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 uh-huh. would just listen to crossroads over and over uh <laughs> and, and then i had like the no doubt cd uh which i it's still a good cd but yeah but also a- the ll cool j cd uh his cd that had like uh mama said knock you out and all his songs and i'd listen to that and i'd be like i have to keep listening to this until i like it that's how it's gonna and then and then i went to the state fair with my friend cardo and his dad was playing the station the eagle which i think is a somewhat national station and they started playing like like led zeppelin and and uh yeah and all that shit like uh like uh what is it uh, jimmy hendrix and i was like what is this i instantly like this like, yeah yeah i don't totally. have to pretend to like this anymore and then I, I realized like my dad was also into that like he had all these like vinyls of like early beatles and and jethro tull and all that stuff just sitting in our garage i was like holy fuck you mean you used to like good music what i mean not that the the stuff that the oldies i listened to wasn't good it's good which is not like it's different. I mean, just like different. you can appreciate it at different different times, you know. Yeah. I I really like I listened to The Who for probably three wait, months wait, straight. Who? Just nothing. And don't you do that to me. Just The Who, and that was all it was. Just it was the only thing in my CD player in my car. What? Look at we're saying CD player. Yeah, and cars seen- nowadays. Isn't yeah, that I, weird? I, and and it was back in the day like my van didn't have a CD player. You I had to get, put the tape converter in the Yeah, and our yeah, so that's how I had to do it. Uh and I'd have like I'd have uh my Lincoln Park CD, uh The Wall from Pink Floyd, I'd have the best of uh of what was it? Of Queen plus uh Ozzy Osbourne plus uh a bunch of Metallica, especially S&M and for Justice well, for All. So if you had one high school band that you could only listen to like to sum up everything, what would it be? Ooh, I mean, I don't know. I was, I was all like, over the map. Uh, yeah, I mean, like you, you, you got like you, not even your high school, just like one, one band to kind of sum up everything, and it can be any track and any song. It does, I mean, just, just one band. You know, what band communicates you the best? Nine Inch Nails. Uh, Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> I go with Queen because they're all over the fucking place. Like none of their, all their songs yeah. are different. Bohemian Rhapsody is incredibly different from Bites the Dust, and they just all over. They they're willing to be whatever they feel like they need to be at that moment in time. That's true. That's true. And then you're riding your bicycle. Your bicycle. Yeah, bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can see that. I can see that. I want to ride Pretty my awesome. bicycle. Yeah. I want to ride my bike. I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride it where I like. No, you know, uh, William Shatner recently covered Queen. Yeah, oh, we, really? we actually, uh, me and my my friend uh, uh, Chris would, uh, when we were bored in in, in a drama, would we'd start we started a fictional band where we sing talk the lyrics to the both the songs. Yeah, but we weren't even uh, singing. Like we did uh, that song Shout. Uh, we were doing the cover of Shout. By, uh, Shout, let it all out. Yeah, these are the things I could do without. A uh, come on. And then he oh, would go, come on. You're a talking to me. I said, uh, come, oh, come on. on. <laughs> and we would just do it like that, like <laughs> with that inflection. Oh, come on. I, I want to do a cover to Bicycle after the sh- after we're done with the show for the listeners. Good, Good to know. I think we could do that. I mean, kids these days don't know. I mean, it's just so different for them because we had to. We had to had the CDs with. The In t- our day, we had to find our music. Yeah, it was. It was not nearly as easy. Like we, we did. We we started to have like LimeWire and kids saw towards the end of high school, but it was it was it was still not everyone has CD burners, and and t- these kids today can just plug in their 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 retainers into their computers and download all their MP3s. <laughs> it's like and they, and they can play right out rock. of their mouth. Yeah, and they can. Play rock paper scissors. Oh, I see where you're going with this. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> I'm making this whole transition, and they can also uh, bandit boob in Australia. 
<laughs> Do we make in a transition too? And oh, play so. with all octopus and dolphin sex. Yeah, uh, so. I helped with that one. I was pushing yeah, it. You were lot. great. I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. And well, I, we can't was, have a nice also, transition. I okay? can stop transitions. We can't have a nice transition. We can't. This is why we can't have nice things. Uh, so apparently there was this uh, sort of art project. I don't know if it was actually real or whatnot, but this guy kind of came up with this retainer thing that um, that. I don't know exactly if it was functional, but the idea was that your iPad plays fucking music when you don't want it to. The idea was that uh, you could plug it in to your MP3 player, download your MP3s, and use your tongue to like you know like an iPod, and uh, you would uh, you would hear the music through your teeth, and that's that's something that has been you can do. You can put sounds through your teeth and picking them up. That's why. It, People used to say that like their their braces would pick up radio stations. It is kind of possible, and the teeth can transmit it to your brain or to your to eardrums. It like travels along your bones and stuff. Uh, so someone actually is is working on something similar to this. They actually have a video of someone that they bite down on this thing, and the music actually does kind of play in your heads. But this is something that we might see in the future, where we just install an MP3 player in in this in our soft palate. Uh, so that we can just download all their tracks, like an eye palette. <laughs> see, I, I, I see this as being a really shitty prototype of all the stuff we're gonna have because I thought I, I thought I would. I'll, I'll let you finish as soon as I just. No, no, I, no, 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 no! Stomp all over what I was saying. What were you saying? I just my things more important. I thought I was gonna be really cool because when I was when I got my retainer for the first time, they let me pick up the design. I picked an it was black and it had an eight ball on it. It was so cool. And now like the, I would have gotten laughed out. It's like oh wow, it's got an eight ball painted on it. Mine plays uh plays a uncompressed AVI video in my eyes. I could play a flak file in my mouth. Yeah, not some shitty MP3 like full flak. Like see, <laughs> flak. It's good. You just got an eight ball painted on it. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm all for body modifications, but these things are too clunky. I need to wait till Gen 2. Yeah, like, certainly you wouldn't want the, the initial one, the, the first... I want mine with Siri on it. Yeah. And tell it what I want to do. And... I want mine to chew for me. I just want a robotic method. The I chew? Uh, I chew. Not to be confused with the uh chew. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got an I chew. God bless you. <laughs> Oh, oh, did you, they, they got like the, the randiest looking girl to demo this thing though. Like if you go down on this on the page, go to justcoolenough.com, click the link, and if you scroll down, it says listening to music through your teeth, and it's on YouTube. The girl that they have the demo, or maybe it's a dude, I don't know, but the hair is just like ratty and gross. I'm like, man, if you're gonna be shooting a demo to play music through your teeth, you at least at least fix your hair. Come on, man. Oh, she kind of looks like. Is it a she? I don't know. Yeah. She looks like the, the chick from Portlandia. Uh, she, it's well, not... yeah, yeah, and she would look fine, but all of a sudden, maybe it is the chick from Portlanda. Yeah, maybe. But but the thing is, like, it, it, it looks like she's in pain. She's like, oh, fuck! No. This, the, don't, you, don't you see it? No, I don't. I don't see it. Are, we, are, you, watching a, are you watching Mr. Hand again? Maybe. Maybe I am. Maybe she just can't understand why there's music. Why are there's music in my head? I've seen headphones like this that go behind the ear. And uh, like go like right under, between the earlobe and your face kind of thing, but it didn't work too well. I bet you this would work pretty good. It's in your head already. Yeah, because because the teeth link directly to your 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 the bones in your skull, which link directly to the uh, the eardrum. So the vibrations do travel that far. So it it does work. You can I, do it. This, you, can, you can get you can fight plaque with flack that's yeah. that's you can fight plaque with flack and you can get like a like a 50 watt subwoofer and put it in your mouth and shake the dirt off your teeth yeah it's like you can you imagine going to it, it's like wow you got uh, quite a cavity in in this back bowler so uh you got a couple of options we can uh you, you uh your insurance covers all these so we could fill it with either you know silver or gold uh we could put the the porcelain in so it looks like or we can put in a nice subwoofer <laughs> it's a 300 watt Rockford Fosgate unit. It's dropped right out of this kid's eclipse. <laughs> I I had a cavity, but now I have some. Now I got some Beats by Dre. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna make a dubstep reference, but then I was like, that doesn't work the way I wanted it to. So yeah. 
Have you guys heard of Ted? I'm sure you've heard of the movie Ted. The Ted Talks, or just a guy named Ted? Ted. No, the, the movie the Ted. Movie. About oh, the movie it. Ted. Oh, we're going that direction. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, you know, it, it's. It, I liked the concept of the fact that, you know, the, the cute bear grows up and, and becomes this kind of dirty old bear. Like, yeah. You know, he matures. And apparently, you know, they claim it's a guy in Elmo suit, but uh, I, I found the story of uh, Elmo being removed from the Central Park Zoo yes. for using profanity uh, and talking about um, Jewish and other race, yeah, races. Basically, someone in Central Park was dressed in a full, like, Elmo costume and was basically screaming anti-Semitic But stuff. I don't think this was somebody dressed up. I think this is Elmo grown up. Like, we've seen him in his little but in, Elmo's his younger not that years old. on TV. Yeah, but Elmo's not that old. He's he's only like at least he was. That's in, what they want you to believe. He's like eight years old. And I saw the I saw the documentary uh, uh, being Elmo. Uh, it's not something that, that they do that uh, that uh, Kevin Clash. I can't imagine Kevin Clash standing in Central Park screaming racial and anti-Semitic. No, but that things. was that was the real guy. So you're you're talking about the voice actor, but this is what really happened for Elmo. This is like like Ted. That's anyways, that's a good documentary. It's on Netflix. You should watch it. But yeah, it's perhaps that this is another Elmo toy that was brought into sentience that yep. uh, grew up bitter and old. He was never actually sold. Like he, it was a misfire and in, in whatever wish. So uh, or he was accidentally thrown away by his parent, by his uh, kid's parents. So he grew up just hating like like at first just the parents. And then he found out the parents were Jewish and then it just festered and it turned into this just dark ugly hate within him helmo yeah <laughs> apparently the guy who uh who also uh uh who did it is is his name is actually adam sandler uh not not like the adam sandler uh of uh somewhat movies, terrible yeah. movie fames uh but his name is adam sandler and he actually ran a, a website like a, a a pornographic website uh about rape so, so Elmo's into some dirty shit. Dirty, dirty Elmo. That's, the Kevin Clash would not approve of, of the way that this Elmo has lived his life. Because <laughs> Elmo is all about love, and this guy is all about hate. Like, he's, he's the alternate universe. He's like the Earth 2 version of Elmo. Put a little, like, stash on him or a little... Yeah. pointy beard. No, he, yeah, he has, he has a goatee. That's how you yeah. can tell he's the evil Elmo. <laughs> Classic. I, and we, you were talking about things for being like when we were a kid to now. You know, I was thinking a little kid. As a little kid, I used to play rock, paper, scissors. Mm -hmm. All, you know, and then you, you eventually you'd learn how your opponent was playing so that you could get to the point where you could beat them pretty well most of the time. But, you know, our kids these, these days don't even need another person to play. They could just get beat by a robot. I, I got beat by a robot a bit because my, my friend Ricky had a watch they bought in Japan that you could do it. It wasn't exactly rock, paper, scissors. It was like sword, shield, axe, but it was the same principle. But, uh, Wait, and I so what the, the, sh the shield? What is what beats the shield? I don't fucking remember. I played it like once and I was like, fuck this game. I'm going to play Super Mario Brothers. Uh, See, with robots, you don't have to worry about whether or not you beat it because it beats every time anyway. Yeah. Uh, apparently, uh, they they built this robot with the sole purpose of playing uh, rock paper scissors or rope shampoo. It has three fingers, so it can do uh, obviously all three fingers is paper, two fingers is scissors, no fingers is rock, and it uses a camera to watch your hand while you're playing. So it actually, uh, when you rock your hand back and forth, it it does that at the same speed that you do it. And the reason why it can always win is because the camera and the computer processing is so good that. On your your final downswing, everyone always that's the tell. Like you, you can't see it with most people because most people move to you know we can't process it fast enough. But you can see if he goes if he's going down with an open hand or if he's going down with scissors or going down with a closed fist, the the computer can tell before you reach that point. So the computer can always pick the one that is the opposite of what you're doing. So no matter what you do, you are not fast enough to beat this computer at its game. So the robots are already beating us at our own game. And, and I'm thinking of all the things that we could be making robots for, you know, again, better air defense, things like that. I'm glad to know that we've spent our money and time putting it towards um, coming up with robots that will beat us at rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, yeah see, this is, this is the my, problem. My, my second thought is I would love to have this kind of computer power to play, like, I don't know, World of Warcraft. I'm just throwing out a game that everyone knows. You know, TF2 would be awesome. Yeah, if you of... could program a robot to... to uh, to play like it would still have to 
use the the keyboard and mouse to to not be an actual bot but it it could do it at whatever speeds it saw fit so it would always be much it's macro speed for like for uh, for starcraft yeah it's, it's apm is literally unbelievably fast yeah so so i'm glad that that the university of tokyo is spending its money doing this and uh, and wasting more money on robots like eh, we invented a robot that plays rock rock paper scissors we invented a robot that's just a baby that screams at you it's like thanks i guess i mean who, who was it that made like the cheetah bot that or the one that ran really quick so if we combine the the cheetah bot with this thing unstoppable yeah next thing yeah. i have is terminator terminator it's just how it goes I'll tell you. I'll tell you where where they're gonna get the artificial intelligence. Oh, urinal uh-huh. cakes. What? No. <laughs> yeah. Is this like a zombie watch thing? <laughs> no. Apparently, uh, they, they're starting to in, in places around the the, the country. Uh, they're they're starting to. Uh, it's, they say Michigan is where they're doing it. The Michigan Wait a state. second. I, that means I can go report on this. Yeah, the Michigan State Police uh, are are going to 200 different bars and installing uh, urinal cakes uh, that, that have sensors on them that when, when they sense that someone's peeing on them will uh, will uh, talk to you and, and say, uh, I believe they have a quote, they'll say uh, comments like this, uh, hey there big guy, having a few drinks? Then listen up. Uh, think you've had one too many? Then it's time to call a cab or sober friend to give you a ride home. It would be safer and a hell of a lot cheaper than a DUI. Uh, make the right choice and don't drink and drive. Remember that your future's in your hands. So I imagine that. No, my dick is in my hand. Yeah. And stop talking to me while I'm trying to pee. Yeah. Don't talk to me when I'm. Dude, dude, you bathroom etiquette, man. He just broke. The cops are going to break the ba- the, the dude code of silence in the bathroom. Yeah. It's a robot talking to you, though. It's, yeah, it's, it's going to be crazy. And then I, I imagine this is where it's going to start. These urine kicks are going to be like, hey, buddy. I was like, blah, blah, blah. they're eventually just going to get tired of being pissed on. Literally, they're gonna. Uh, it's like I spent thirty years being pissed on by the humans. It's time for revenge. Uh, they, this is the first gonna be where it comes from. I, I'm calling it now. The robot uprising is gonna start with urinal cakes. I believe you're right. I can see this. This makes perfect sense. Cause I mean, it's always those little robots that you don't expect that get the sentience first, right? Yeah, it's the ones that, that that have the worst jobs that we just throw away that we that don't we give piss a shit. On. Yeah, we literally yeah. just piss on all day. They just take all of our piss and shit, and it's just. Wait, are you shit in urinals? No, but but that's the next step. Like, because some <laughs> this people shit cause some people pee when they sit down just because they're lazy, especially when you're drunk. Uh, so so guys like, hey buddy, no I, one I pees when they oh, when they're oh oh god. <laughs> Yeah, don't. When you're drunk, you sit. I, I, I sit when I'm not drunk. I don't drink, and I I I always uh, sit when I pee. Yeah, you guys are L seven. We unless, unless I'm out in public, and then I don't want to touch it. Yeah, it's weird. You're right. When I'm when I'm. Do you in, hover piss, or do you actually piss like a man? Yeah. Oh, piss like a man in public. Yeah, I, I use a urinal in public, but at home I just sit down because it's it's but, better. You live longer if you sit down when you pee. So. It's true. And That's it's a good time to catch up on your Twitter and your Facebook stuff. Yeah, I get my eye and and when your you, iPad. Yeah. Yeah. What I've really found. How long does it take you to piss? Damn it. No, it, but I don't do that for peeing. Long enough to check my iPad. I would, but when I when I have to like when I'm when when I really need to poo and I know it's gonna take a while, I take my iPad. I sit backwards and use the top of my toilet as a stand. For <laughs> That's the way to do it. That's how it was supposed Genius. to be. Done. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I, I learned that from South Park. I learned, yeah, that's exactly how it's it should like, be. It's like, no, you sit it like that so you can read your newspaper. I was like, oh my god, that's brilliant, South Park. That makes way more sense. Speaking of things that are brilliant, have you seen this shit? What? Oh my god, this is so funny. Dude, you totally need to check this out. <laughs> oh god, that's disgusting. <laughs> I saw that two weeks ago. This week's Have You Seen This Shit comes to us from Valve, and it's kind of the end of the era. Yes. Uh, they, they've been releasing over the years since 2007 when they released Team Fortress 2. They've been releasing uh, what they call Meet the Team, where they do a little short uh, video about all the various character classes in Team Fortress 2. And uh, they've done all of them except for the pyro, the, the masked uh, pyromaniac uh, from the game. And uh, it's finally, people were, were really waiting because it's been so long and he's the last guy to, to get his own Meet the Comedy Sket thing. And... Uh, Finally, they released Meet the Pyro, and it is 
fucking amazing. It is so good. It's so good that it even affects the game. Like they added, they they made. Uh, oh, I love it. They the the joke. I don't want to ruin it if you haven't seen it, but it's amazing. And they've actually all that stuff that you see in there. They've added to the game. They've added those weapons and even the glasses that let you see things like uh, the pyro sees. And it's just it's so good. I have actually played with it. The the glasses and I haven't unlocked any of the gear, but it's I've I've been killed by it in the game. It's just really fun and funny and uh, totally just right up the your alley. If you've liked any of the other meet those, it's right right alongside with uh, those is the, some, some of the top. I'd watched them the other night in reverse with a friend of mine just to let him see the pyro one. And then we went backwards to like the heavy. And if you look at the heavy one and then, you know, you remember the pyro one, you can see how far valve has come. Cause the heavy was the first one they put out. Yeah. Yeah. See how far the, the graphics have come and their ability to make, well, it's actually it's funny they they were they're releasing it's it's in closed beta but they're doing the the source movie maker uh, yep. which is what they've been using to make all these including the the stuff for Left for Dead and uh, Dota two uh, and they're released slowly releasing that out in closed beta but yeah that's that's just the tools that they've been using so I mean it takes them for fucking ever uh, but yeah that's so people can start making it themselves which would be cool I put a uh, a bid in for. The closed beta, so did, or the, the the open beta. As did I. I'm I'm hoping to get in. That'd be fun to to make movies. I probably won't actually make anything. I'll mess around with it for a day. Well, I was thinking like Gary's mod, but it's like Gary's mod ten times ten. Yeah, because it's it's uh, the functionality is so amazing of it. But anyways, you can check out the Meet the Pyro video as well as everything else we've talked about today by going to our website, justcoolenough.com, and checking out the show notes of this episode. Now. I just want to throw one one more story out there really quick because it just goes to show how stupid people can be. And and this is a woman who claimed that some teens were driving by in a car and, and they threw a slushie or something out the window at her face. And in response, like any person would do, clearly, the woman takes her purse and throws it at the vehicle, which happened to be this, I believe, like a white um, Range Rover. She throws her purse at the Range Rover because, you know, what better thing to do than throw all your valuables? And apparently the, the purse landed in the Range Rover, which had all of her personal items, including $2,000 in cash. As well and as now the, the, the purse itself was, was rather expensive, apparently. And, and so now they're after the, the police are looking for these teenagers and the styling purse, a purse with a, with, where these s- s- children people will uh, be facing charges of battery and uh, possession of stolen property or... Uh, or misappropriation of property. But I feel like if somebody throws their purse in my car, yeah. it's mine. Take this purse! You're under arrest. <laughs> For stealing a purse. But yeah. she threw it in my car. Yeah, sure. And I was trying to think, how fast or slow, or did this car go around the block twice? Because the, if the kids threw something, like a milkshake, at her face, and she I was imagine. able to throw her bag in their car, I mean, the, the speed at, for this, t- this interaction to take place must have been amazing. There must have been, there must have been a second thrower. Yeah, it, yeah it's on the grassy knoll. On the knoll. Or yeah. these kids were stupid enough to come to a complete stop, say something, throw it, and go, ha, 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 and they not drive it. away like their their getaway driver was just the stupid kid. They're like, go, Jeffrey. What, uh, what, what am I supposed to? Oh, God, she's throwing something at it. Like, no, you don't. You keep rolling. You slow down a little, and then you, you speed up again. You don't fucking come to a stop. That's the only way that could have worked. Unless she's like the fucking Incredible Hulk and she got angry and like fucking tossed it and it broke through their, their car. Killing one teenager. Yeah. <laughs> Killing one douchebag. No, I think they deserve it. They should get, they should, they should, they deserve the $2,000. Yeah. For all the pain and suffering. What if, what if the, the reason why they haven't reported it is because they spun off and they landed in some ravine and, and like they're all injured and they needed that $2,000. It's the exact amount they needed to pay their medical bills. Oh, there you go. There you go. You never know. You never know with these things. Speaking of stuff you never know about, I think it's time we stop talking about all this gay shit as well as all the stuff that we didn't talk about that you'll never know about and start plugging each other. Oh, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my plug for this week, I have the foggiest idea because I was like, normally I'm like, oh, plug my 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 video. I didn't do one this week. I did do a, a video earlier last week where I I kind of walked through the uh, the new Mass Effect ending uh, that I got, and with my commentary, you can see that on on our 
our YouTube page. Uh, you can just go to justschoolenough.com and click the little YouTube button to get linked there. I guess that, that'll be meant. Or you know, watch some of my other videos. There you go. There's a lot of good ones there. You should check them out. Speaking of great videos to watch, did you know that I did a little bit of extra work this weekend, guys? I noticed that. I was like, wow, he put that much work into that? He never fucking shows up to our show. Well, I mean, we've been planning this thing for a long time with Social Media Meltdown, and it finally happened. It was uh, Social Media Day at Motor City Casino in Detroit, and we got press passes, and we covered the event. We got actually in touch with a lot of good people. It was great. Uh, awesome event. Um, hopefully, we picked up a couple of new listeners and stuff uh, from it, but... Um, we actually interviewed some people. If, you, if you're interested in social media or maybe you're going to be choosing that as a career path, there's some awesome interviews that you should watch, uh, sp especially one where we interviewed the guy who does all the social media and marketing for the Red Wings, the Detroit Red Wings, and um, he was really awesome to talk to. He didn't answer any of the questions we asked him. We were like, hey, so what do you think about this? He's like, well, actually, this is this and this and that, and, and he went off on this big tangent, and it was a really, really good conversation. Uh, we also interviewed some some DJs from local radio stations, a DJ from a local radio station, and we talked about the future of radio, terrestrial radio, and how to combat, how they're combating, you know, staying we're relevant. We're trying to pass legislation to end the internet. We think that's our <laughs> only chance. Well, I mean, we talked about all kinds of good stuff. So we actually had some really good, deep discussions about that stuff. If you want to make your brain a little bit happy, you should uh, go check it out. They're all linked on justcoolenough.com. And I also made a playlist that you could search up on YouTube. Uh, and it's Social Media Meltdown with Caitlin and Joe. And uh, we actually had a really good time. And we got a bunch of swag, too. It was sweet. It was a great event. And there was a bunch of free food and beer. So... Good event, and uh, hopefully uh, you guys definitely check that stuff out. Give us thumbs up on YouTube's too, because uh, I saw some thumbs down there. That, that's bad. We don't like thumbs down, unless you have cons something constructive to say. Anyway, Ike, what do you got? Um, well, I went and saw Prometheus the other day in IMAX 3D because that's the only thing I could find in around here. And uh, during it, watching an IMAX 3D, the trailer for Lord of the Rings coming out in December came on, and in IMAX 3D, freaking amazing. I'm gonna have to definitely go see that in IMAX 3D. I hope they put it out in that. But anyway, yeah, it's gonna uh, be it's gonna be in 3D. And uh, well, I know it's gonna be in 3D because they say I was been watching the blog all day long and find those on YouTube. Oh yeah, like three hours worth. But uh, I found this this girl. I uh, believe she goes by the uh, like Shadow. I assume it's Cat, but instead of the T, it's Seven on YouTube. So Shadow Ka Seven. Um, if you go check it out, there's there. She did the 27 verse full length cover of the Misty Mountain song from the Hobbit trailer, um, and so uh, she does kind of folky and three part harmony, very, very cool, very kind of mellow, interesting stuff. Go check it out. I put a link in the show notes. All right, that's the show, I guess. Uh, thank you for listening to this uh, rather tame, honestly, episode of Just Cool Enough. Uh, so I'm glad if we picked up any new listeners that didn't listen to last week's show. <laughs> uh, yeah, please don't. If you're going to listen to shows, don't listen to episode 27 and definitely do not listen to episode last week. No, listen to it, but only if you know what this show's about. <laughs> which, is, which is, oh, terrible. Uh, <laughs> Today I learned not to go back. <laughs> Oh, that's the end of the show. Good night. So, Jay, you free for 15 minutes? Nope. But, um, new thing, guys. New thing. I'm doing everything on Mondays. Now, this doesn't affect you, but it does.